over this transmission. However, this transmission is reaching you. This is the Patriot Radio News Hour. It's a Friday. You made it. We made it. Hope everyone's having a good week. Uh, no, your ears are not playing tricks on me. This is not Joe. Uh, we've not gone through another quality sound quality upgrade or change with the, with the program. This is Brian, your co-host from the foothills of Colorado, joined by my partner in crime, Jason, there at the studios at KHNC. I hope everyone's ready for a good show this morning. Jason, are you with me, brother? I am here, definitely. This is it's always a, a, a fun day to, to jump on Joe's show there in Arizona and uh, give, a, give a crack at, at the, his audience. Uh, something I want to make clear. If you are listening to this show on Monday, if it is Monday and you're listening to this, you are listening to a repeat. If you do not want to hear us again on Monday and you're listening, this is what you want to do. You want to go to 1360khnc.com. You will stream our our radio station here uh, into your listening uh, area, and you will have Joe doing a live show on Monday here in Colorado. So you can listen to this show. We're good. We have a great show, I think, lined up. Lots of fun stuff to talk about. But uh, so if you want to if you want to hear us again on Monday, go for it. But if you're listening, and this is Monday, and this is a repeat. You want to go to 1360khnc.com, stream in our nine o'clock hour, which is normally Joe's show, and uh, it's, just, it's just that KXXT is shutting down for the holiday, and uh, we own we're buying the radio station there at KHNC. We don't have to take a holiday, so we're gonna we're gonna come up with uh, hopefully a new item to sell and uh, definitely have some new content. Yeah, that's right, Jason. And uh, the top of that web page, there's an embedded uh, streaming, web streaming player. You just click the play button. There's a couple options there. It's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, that's that's exactly how you can catch us uh, Monday or any other days that you want to, uh, should you choose to, to stream what, whatever uh, KHNC is playing at the different hours. Something else to, for you guys in Arizona, just, just as a reminder, if you didn't know, we don't have podcasts of our show yet. It's something that we're working on. We want to get uh, podcasting of many of our shows here at KHNC, but the best way to listen to our shows is just to stream them in and listen to them right now. We do have throughout our schedule replays at different hours of the evenings and weekends. Uh, Joe's show is replayed regularly throughout the evenings and weekends, so there's lots of ways to, to catch shows that you missed if you're not podcasting Joe's show. And we don't have podcasts, but uh, we have a we have we have a schedule that we're going to be opening up and bringing lots of new shows in. But right now, though, that those evenings and weekends, you'll hear a lot of uh, Alex Jones replays. You'll hear our replays, and some of our local shows will get replayed throughout the schedule. So, go out to that website and get acquainted with what we're doing. Yeah, that's right, Jason. That website also has the the schedule for each day of the week you, uh, based on time. You can scroll down and see what's on the different times just for for planning. So it's uh, it's uh, quite quite the tool. So hope hope that helps. So uh, Brian, uh, what's, what anything going on there in line? So so just to let the uh, let you guys in Arizona know, Brian's usually a, a call in. He comes in and does a show occasionally. Uh, stay stay at the homestead. So he's off in the foothills near the mountains. Uh, and he's always got a more rustic uh, view of life because he's out there with a large piece of property and has the animals and, and the more snow and weather to deal with. So we always like to see what's going on there. I live and I live a little uh, a little east of there near Longmont, and so we we are definitely front rangers. And uh, anything anything going on, Brian, over there in uh, Lions? Well, not since last night. My uh, I've got a I've got a large Holstein steer that's uh, bigger than a horse, and he thinks he doesn't have to respect the fences. So I was out. Late last night in the dark, trying to find him and catch him. And the nice part about Holstein is you can at least throw a throw a halter, a horse halter on him, and uh, and try to lead him home. He's he's several times uh, bigger than me, so he's pulling me around. But that's basically it. No mountain lions, no bobcats, no none of those sightings here recently. So the day ain't over yet, though. <laughs> and uh, here in Johnstown, where I come in and help run the well, I don't help. I'm basically running the radio station uh, with the help of Brian and Joe uh, calling in and giving me support. Uh, mostly my face is just uh, knuckling down, dealing with, I get, to, I have to uh, deal with all the customers. I'm the guy, I'm the contact point for the customers here in Colorado. Uh, talking to Joe about radio stuff, all these things we're doing, working hard to get the radio station better and better every day. 
so I, I uh, you know, I, once I'm off of work uh, at the end of the day, I, I, I kind of deflate and get ready for the next day. But yeah, it's you been exciting. Five or six hats but, that you wear throughout the day, throughout the day, Jason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I have to, uh, we like putting together good deals. We're going to have some good some good deal today to sell, and uh, I got a. It's it's crazy. Brian knows it. I mean, Brian's got his full time job, but we we lean on him to to make some extra phone calls and lighten my load a little bit. And uh, Joe Joe and Arlene are there trying to. Uh, we're going to get new advertisers, new shows, and man, we are we are working. We're working. Uh, we we are excited, and we want this thing to just blow up and be exciting for everybody else. So I I, I can't implore you Arizona guys more to, to you need to really just come into this website. Uh, keep listening to KXXT. They have good programming there, and uh, I'm sure you guys love that station. But you, stream us in. You know, find out what's going on here. And some of our we local shows, know. you might be surprised. Yeah, Jason, I was going to say, you never know what, what deal, a different deal we may be offering in the afternoon on, on our show at uh, 3 o'clock Mountain Time. So you never know. Yeah, we're going to have fake news Friday. It's, it's going to be the first time Brian and I try going against each other. But uh, – when we change fake news Friday, I, I think we're going to have something to where we want Arizona people and Colorado people to be listening in, and maybe uh, we'll have a free giveaway. And when you get, when you call in and maybe on a Thursday and get that free giveaway, then you get to maybe be on fake news Friday. So we, we haven't really worked out all the details yet, but these, these are some of the fun things we're going to do and have the audience be a little more uh, involved with what we're doing. Because in Colorado, the audience loves to get involved and call in and, and uh, talk to what we're doing. So... Uh, that's going to be the music. We're coming into our break. We're going to have fake news Friday. We are going to talk a little bit about uh, President Lincoln and uh, his assassination. We'll be covering that after fake news Friday. Stay tuned. One of these things is not like the others. One of these things doesn't belong. Can you tell which thing is not? like the others before I finish my song. From News Headquarters, this is Fake News Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. What is real? How do you define real? Fake news Friday. Fake, 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 fake. Welcome back. Fake news Friday on the Patriot Radio News Hour. Ramon, I love that. That's that's awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You bet. And uh, listeners, know your ears are not playing tricks on you. If This is the uh, Colorado team tag team in it uh, for Joe, who's out of the office today. So, uh, Jason, you want to tell him how Fake News Friday works? Yep, these are all true stories. Uh, shocking but true. It shows the decay of American society in, in so many ways. But our partner Glenn puts these together, and one of these stories is either completely made up on occasion, but most likely a piece of the story has been altered. And this is, uh, this is how fake news works. They take a story and they they make it uh, a little bit off, so you get the wrong information, and you go out and tell your friends, and suddenly nobody knows the truth. And that's what we do on this show. We just show you the fakeness and the astonishing facts of what's going on, and we have to we have to try to figure out which one's the fake one. All right. Story number one as we re- begin to report on the decay. Cory Booker told the vegan magazine Veg News earlier this month that he became a vegan after coming to the realization that eating eggs, quote, didn't align with my spirit. While claiming he does not want to lecture Americans on their diets, Booker says Americans need to be nudged into fake cheese because the planet cannot sustain the environmental impact of the food industry. Quote, you see the planet Earth moving towards what is the standard American diet. We've seen this massive increase in consumption of meat produced by the industrial animal agricultural industry. The uh, tragic reality is the planet simply cannot sustain billions of people consuming industrial produced animal agriculture because of the environmental impact, he said. It's just not possible. That is story number one. 
Story number two, Apple and Google have come under fire for carrying a Saudi government app called Abshir that allows men in the country to supervise their wives' travels. Apple CEO Tim Cook said that he hadn't heard about the app, but obviously will take a look at it if that's the case, he said. Apple did not immediately return the requests for a comment. Neither did Google, which also hosts the app. Abshear was featured in two stories earlier this month that uh, detailed how the app works and why it can cause harm to asylum-seeking Saudi women. Women in the kingdom are subject to laws that require male guardians to approve their movements. That is story number two. Story number three, David Hogg, in an interview on MSNBC, told viewers that Americans need to find unity in addressing, uh, addressing gun violence, Hogg said. When asked about the recent efforts of banning certain kinds of semi-automatic firearms at the state level, he said that he and other of the March for Live activists had introduced a ballot initiative to ban the so-called assault weapons in Florida. He said those who own an AR-15, the most popular rifle in the United States, want to hunt other people. The truth of the matter is a weapon like an AR-15 have an effective range of over 1,500 meters, Hogg said. If you're using a weapon with an effective range of over 1,500 meters, you are definitely not defending yourself. You are hunting a human being. He continued, the only people that need to be hunted are the NRA members, and let's see how they would like that. All right, gentlemen, that is a story one, two, and three. What do you think? Who's going to go I'll, first? I'll go first. Fantastic. Uh, I don't know. The, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That but, would not be a choice. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the, the, the first story, it's funny. Uh, when it comes to consuming meat and, and animal products, uh, you have Al Gore, who is the, the big global warming climate change guy, you know, shaming everybody for driving their cars. Uh, it's funny how they've gone to this. Uh, if you eat meat now, you're causing global, global warming because there's some evidence that they're showing for that. And uh, Al Gore has one of the largest cattle ranches. Uh, he owns tons of that. Of that. It shows you how full of crap these, <laughs> these guys are when it comes to climate change because they just shift the story to, to, to make us all feel guilty about living our lives. I, I don't know which story is, is, is fake. I, I'm going to say it's that first one just because I can't really pick out the details in the other two that could be wrong. I've heard all three of these stories. They all sounded like the ones I read. So I'm going to go with the first one, that there's something uh, shifted in that first story about the, uh, uh, the guy that doesn't want us to eat uh, dairy and eat meat anymore. Okay, so you're going with Spartacus. All right. Now, Brian, your turn. <laughs> uh, those are good. Uh, yeah, what was Cory Booker? He's a, is he a senator from New Jersey, I think? I believe so, Senator yes. or congressman? Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, cow flatulence. Who, who, who would have thought that that's what's going to end the, the world as we know it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't fault anyone. If vegans, what they want to do, that, that's, that's great. It's, uh, there's probably ways that we can improve, uh, you know, meat, agriculture production. But uh, it would be one thing if we could get the, get the central banker debt system off the, the, the farmer's backs. So I imagine that would be a big, big step in the right direction. But I'm going to go, actually, I, think, I heard about the Apple Google app to uh, monitor the movement of, of Saudi women. Uh, interesting kind of, a, not kind of, but the double standard that's clear clear with that uh, between Apple and Google and the other apps that they want to uh, 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 monitor, control, and not let on their platforms. But I think something in that third story, Mr. David Hogg, and you know what? i got to give a shout-out. There's actually, I prefer the David Hogg that's the president of the, uh, the gene company. I won't say it, give him a free plug, but uh, anyways... When he talked about 1,500 meter range, I'm not sure that's possible with an AR-15. Maybe I'm mistaken. I'm going to say that 1,500 meter range is the is the fake part of that third story. All right, so you're going with story number three, David Hogg. That in fact is the fake story, the wow. David Hogg story. <laughs> now the portion of that story uh, is um, that the comment, believe it or not, is where he said. Only the people that need to be hunted are the NRA, the NRA members. Let's oh. see how they like it. But according to David Hogg, who you know is a, a brilliant, brilliant young man, he says that does have a, a range of 1,500 meters. 
Maybe, maybe it does in the right hands. Maybe in the shoes of uh, Glenn, our partner, might. So fantastic. <laughs> by, by the way, my favorite hog was Boss Hog from the Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. <laughs> Round two, we're going to start off here with a uh, proposed bill in Oregon would limit ammo purchases to only 20 rounds a month and outlaw magazines capable of holding more than five rounds. It would also raise the age to purchase any firearm to 21 and require a permit to do so. Under the same bill introduced in Oregon, any revolver holding more than five rounds would be outlawed including a model such as a Colt Single Action Army, a classic design dating back to 1870, the old Western six-shooter, not to mention hundreds of modern six-shot revolvers. Story number two, <clears throat> Hubble reveals the dynamic atmospheres of Uranus. <laughs> Dur- <laughs> Gentlemen, please. How do you like that, Brian? you like that? <laughs> Gentlemen, please. That's we're reading. That's what I've heard yet. Fantastic. We'll just end it right there. Good night, everybody. We're done. <laughs> All right, here we go. During its uh, routine yearly monitoring, monitor, um, that's easy to say. After Uranus, you know, what, what else can you say? Uh, <laughs> of the weather on our solar system's outer planets, NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has uncovered a new mysterious dark storm and provided a fresh look <laughs> at a long-lived storm circulating around the north polar region on Uranus. Like Earth, Uranus has seasons, which likely drives some of the uh, features in its atmosphere. But the seasons are much longer than on Earth, spanning decades rather than months. The snapshots of Uranus reveals a dominant feature, a vast, bright, Stormy cloud clap across the North Pole. Oh, excuse me. This is the funniest thing I've heard all week. <laughs> mm-hmm. Gentlemen, please. Family show. <clears throat> it's like third grade in here. Uh, story number three. The Tesla CEO, Elon Musk, is planning to put out more than 4,000 satellites in orbit in order to blanket the Earth with Internet access. SpaceX, the privateer space company led by Musk is requiring permission from the Chinese government to operate a massive network of 4,425 satellites plus in-orbit spares. I'm not sure if they're going to be around Uranus, but to provide high-speed global internet coverage. Documents filed with the Chinese telecommunications communication pr- proposed a uh, initial launch of 800 satellites to create an orbiting digital communication array to cover China the U.S., and including the Pacific Rim countries and Europe. In the filing, SpaceX said the system is designed to provide a wide range of broadband and communication services for residential, commercial, institutional, government, and professional users worldwide. Gentlemen, what is the fake story? Wow. I'm not even going to comment on that second one. Mm -hmm. Glenn's torturing us with that one. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think that that one says itself. Uh, the, you know, the Tesla CEO and the 4, 000, over 4,000 satellites, wouldn't that be great if they weren't trying to use all the different uh, apps and technologies to monitor us? That'd be great if it was strictly for broadband access. <laughs> that, that was very, very troubling. I'm, I, you know, they're all true, right? They're all true stories. Correct. I think there's something in that first one about the Oregon bill uh, out on uh, five rounds and, and, and above. I, I, I think that's I, – I really – maybe it's wishful thinking. I wish there's something in that one that's, that's faked. All right, story number one. All right, Jason, what do you say? And don't uh, say Uranus. Please. Breaking news, there's a uh, dark storm coming out of Uranus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, Brian, Brian has become the master at this game, so he is probably right with the first story. But for gamesmanship and a chance to tie him, uh, probably going to lose 0-2. to two, But I'm going to go with story number two uh, just to see if I could uh, – you know, there, there's so much room there for something to be wrong. I'm sure it's probably, <laughs> uh, it's probably right on the nose. But uh, Okay. So you're you're, number two and you're going to Brian up. All right. Well, um, Jason, the stories about Uranus are true. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's still, still entertaining. Nonetheless. It's the, uh, I'm just letting that soak in. I'm just realizing I said that statement on the air. <laughs> um, uh, so, no, it's the best. This is the best one Glenn's brought us. This is, this, this is what I need for a Friday. <laughs> fantastic. Well, uh, gentlemen, the fake story is story number three. 
Elon oh. Musk. Well, the only part of that is fake, though, of course, is the Chinese government portion of that, which doesn't seem that fake at all, if you think about it. Wow. Man, man, if I just would have just shifted to number three, I could have tied that thing up. Well, you got uh, distracted by Uranus. So, I mean, <laughs> what are you going to do? You picked it. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, before we, uh, before we jump off for the halftime break, I uh, wanted to cover our, our, our specials, and we'll, do, we'll hit them again later. We have today, uh, for the Joe's Not Here special, <laughs> $5 Liberties at 370 bucks. That's, that's uh, a discount off our regular price. Uh, load up. Gold is in a great place to be buying today, uh, the last couple of years, and, 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 and until we have another market bust, this is, this is the good old days to buy. $5 Liberty, that's 370 bucks, and we still have those dimes and quarters. It's, it's uh, mind-boggling that we still have some of these. But uh, the, the, the deal on these quarters and dimes is going away soon. $125 per roll of quarters. And if you get two rolls of dimes, it'll also $125. If you want just a single roll of dimes, we'll give it to you for $62.50. 800-951-0592. When we get back, we're going we're gonna to cover a little bit of uh, why, did, uh, why was the Abraham Lincoln actually killed. Was it because he was... Uh, the the enemy of the slave states, or was it something to do with the bankers? This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily commentary continuing the conservative pro-family legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. Success is hard to argue with, or so the saying goes. Yet Democrats are determined to fight against our law enforcement officers, no matter how much good they do for our communities. In Democrats' continued fight against law and order, they want to abolish immigration and customs enforcement, also known as ICE. The Democrats claim federal law enforcement agents needlessly harass and endanger aliens attempting to enter our country illegally. And therefore, ICE should be disbanded entirely. This kind of ludicrous leftist position is not just an affront to the law enforcement community, but to every American who values the safety for themselves and their families. Although the mainstream media likes to scrutinize every action of ICE officers, actually documented cases of human rights abuses are almost impossible to find. It's a tragic reality that many illegal aliens are badly hurt or die in their dangerous attempt to enter the United States illegally. Women and children are especially vulnerable to the perils. However, the blame for these tragedies certainly can't be laid at the feet of ICE agents. ICE agents are constantly rescuing aliens from unsuccessful attempts to cross the border. ICE cannot be held responsible when parents knowingly endanger their children by embarking on such a dangerous trek. Not only is ICE saving lives by preventing the deaths of border crossers, but they are also doing their job effectively. A report on ICE's performance in fiscal year 2018 reveals that the law enforcement agency arrested over 6,500 criminal aliens who were convicted of homicide and sexual offenses during that year. That only counts those who had been convicted. There were thousands more arrested who had serious charges pending against them. While the left paints a picture of ICE maliciously tearing innocent families apart, the numbers don't support that narrative. Around 140,000 of the 160,000 illegal aliens arrested in fiscal year 2018 were being charged with crimes other than illegal entry. As usual, Democrats are having trouble finding numbers to support their false narrative. Immigration and Customs Enforcement performs a public service for all Americans by taking criminals off the streets. Don't fall for the fairy tales that tell you otherwise. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report with Ed Martin, president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. What's the latest on building the wall to protect our southern border? To the liberal media, it's a joke. But the crisis of illegal aliens is no laughing matter. At phyllisschlafly.com, we're asking serious questions regarding what to build, who's paying for it, and how best to deploy our military. Go to phyllisschlafly.com and join us again for the Phyllis Schlafly Report.
Welcome back. Second half of the Patriot Radio News Hour, live on this Friday, uh, being hosted by the Colorado tag team, Jason and Brian, while Joe is away. Don't worry, it's all good. Joe's off uh, having some fun, well-deserved fun. So uh, thanks for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed Fake News Friday. Uh, never mind the disturbing aspects of those true <laughs> stories, but uh, what is today, the 15th of February? You know what, i got one thing here, Jason, before I let you take it away. 1798, the first serious fist fight occurs in Congress. So if we think uh, things are uh, uh, non-civil now, uh, it could, I guess it could be worse. Maybe that have some more redeeming aspect from an entertainment value. Jason? Well, you know, if, if they were fist fighting in Congress, that means that somebody would actually maybe be fighting for what's right. So maybe that's yes. the fact that there is no fist fighting is, is shows you that they're all working for the same team. Uh, hey, so, something I want to remind everybody. If you are listening to this show and it is Monday, you are listening to a repeat. KXXT is shutting down for the holiday, but KHNC is not. So if you want to hear a new show uh, and it's Monday, uh, it's very possible that Joe is currently at 16, or, I'm sorry, 1360KHNC.com where you can stream our broadcast and listen to Joe doing an, uh, an original show here on Monday. Uh, currently it is Friday, so we're going to uh, continue with our show here, uh, doing Joe's show. And uh, Just a quick uh, adder to that, Jason, about that website, uh, folks. What, whatever your favorite search engine is, uh, the more searches you do, it'll it'll creep up in the page rankings. You, you, it may take, uh, you know, scrolling to the second or third page. Uh, since that's a new website, searching for that 1360 or KHNC, but it's 1360KHNC.com, uh, DuckDuckGo, Start Page. I, I've got a lot of preferences over the the, the Google uh, and their issues that I've got with them. But nevertheless, there's multiple ways, but 1360KHNC.com is how, you, how you'll find that stream. Go ahead, Jason. Excellent, excellent. Okay, uh, we have a couple of segments left. I'm gonna, uh, it'll take a, a few to get through this, but I want you know th- this week uh, we know the holiday on Monday is President's Day. Tuesday was Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Uh, he would have been 210 years old if it was uh, possible to be that old and alive. And uh, you know, there's always a little bit of misinformation about everything we've learned in American history. Uh, the bankers since the beginning of our country, have done everything they can to control the new world. They wanted everything, and the new world was, a, was considered a threat to them in a lot of ways. The, the European bankers had control of, of most of the rest of the world, and uh, the, the new world had all this opportunity, and we, we had, at, by the time Abraham Lincoln was president and we had the Civil War going on, we had, uh, as a country, eliminated two central banks. We experimented with it twice. It was a miserable failure, and the people of those days in the 1800s simply eliminated it. I want to read a few pages out of a book by uh, Robert Galen Ross Sr. Uh, he's a brilliant guy. He's actually written a, a book where he actually has uh, listed out all of the globalists, all of the networks, all of the organizations. Yeah, He did a great study on this stuff. If you really want to read a guy that has the actual physical evidence and, and a, a lot of the circumstantial evidence of what these guys are doing that he's a great guy to listen to he, i don't i don't know if he's still alive he'd be 88 years old i think this year but uh you, you can uh, google him i think he's been on alex jones a few times you can really uh, the guy's great i'm gonna read a little bit excerpt out of one of his books about abraham lincoln and why he was assassinated so let me get into it lincoln was the first in a line of assassinations in the united states that we can now tie directly to the elite the evidence in the case of Lincoln is necessarily circumstantial, isn't necessarily circumstantial, uh, but because too much time has passed since his death, it's hard to verify this beyond a shadow of a doubt. However, you should seriously consider the following. Lincoln was shot at 10.15 p.m. on April 14, 1865, and he died the next morning at 7.22 a.m. in the, in the uh, Peterson boarding house. The crime scene. John Wilkes Booth found out on the morning of April 14th that Lincoln was to attend the play Our American Cousin at the Ford Theater that night, so he made plans to be there. Lincoln and his party arrived at about 8.30 p.m. and joined their friends Clara Harris and Henry Rathbone in his state box overlooking the stage. Booth arrived at around 9.30 p.m. and left his home, oh, left his horse with Joseph Peanuts Burroughs in the rear alley. 
At 10.15 p.m., Booth opened the door to Lincoln's box, entered, and fired a shot from point-blank range into the back of Lincoln's head with a single-shot Derringer pistol. He then struggled with Rathbone and then jumped from the box to the stage 11 feet below. When, John, uh, when, when Booth landed, he snapped the fibula bone in his left foot uh, near the ankle. As he limped across the stage wielding a hunting knife, and before an audience of about a thousand, he shouted, Sic Semper Tyrannus, Latin for thus ever to tyrant. He made it out, the, out of the theater to his horse in the alley, mounted and fled the scene. Booth and fellow conspirator David Harold, who arrived separately, left the, uh, left the city via the Navy Yard Bridge. Uh, the accused assassin, John Wilkes Booth, was born May 10, 1838, as an actor who performed throughout the country in many plays. He was left, uh, he was the lead in some of William Shakespeare's most famous works. In late summer 1864, Booth began developing plans to kidnap Abraham Lincoln, take him to Richmond, the, the Confederate ca uh, capital, and hold him for ransom. Several attempts to do so had failed. So he was instructed by his commander in the Knights of the Golden Circle to kill Abraham Lincoln. Without a doubt, John Wilkes Booth is the assassin. Uh, as a spy for the Knights of the Golden Circle, uh, he, he was the actual killer of, of Abraham Lincoln. There were a thousand or so witnesses to the scene, so it's very hard to say that anything but him was the killer. Motives. The granddaughter of John Wilkes Booth, Isola Forrester conducted an extensive research of her grandfather and wrote a 500-page book <clears throat> excuse me, on the subject titled This One Mad Act, published in 1937. Some of the most revealing facts that she found were quoted in the book. Page 262, Smoot says, By the way, when Booth shot Lincoln, he had on his person $6,500 in paper money USA, he planned to go to the seaboard and board a vessel and get away to a country with no extradition treaty. Page 273, on April 19, 1865, the same paper, the New York Tribune, stated that the first suggestion that Booth was merely an instrument chosen by the order to which he belonged to remove Lincoln. So newspapers were already in that day printing that he belonged to an order and was ordered to do the assassination. It is confidently believed that Booth cannot much longer escape arrest. Booth is known to have been a member of the Order of the Knights of the Golden Circle. So, we're, we're coming into a break. Uh, I have a little bit more to read about this, and you won't, be, you, you won't believe what the bankers actually said in those days out in public about what they wanted to do. We'll be right back. Major Radio News Hour live on this Friday. Looks like gold and silver. Well, gold's up a couple bucks. It's at uh, 1314 90 Paper markets are up, but uh, today's Joe is away special. We've got $5 liberties, $370 a piece, and I think we still have a few rolls of uh, those silver dimes and quarters. Quarter rolls, $125. Dollars per roll, the dimes are, are half that, or you get two two rolls of dimes for the same price, same amount of silver, 125 bucks. Uh, toll free number 800-951-0592. Call us and let us know how many you want. Real quick, uh, Trump announced uh, he's signing the border bill and declaring a national emergency to get the wall funding. So that that just happened this morning with a uh, rose garden announcement. But uh, Jason, I'll tell you what, you know what? Story. we'll cover more of that on our afternoon show. You can uh, you don't have to wait till Monday to uh, stream us in. Uh, I think Brian and I will go, we'll be covering a little more of that Trump story. I, I didn't even hear that because I was so busy. So that's uh, that's good to hear. All right. Well, we were talking about uh, Lincoln's assassination, and we're going to draw some conclusions directly to the bankers and why they wanted him dead and why the Civil War was created as a way to break up America for financial gain. Uh, we were in the motives of why John Wilkes Booth did it. Uh, the elite who resented Lincoln's printing of the greenbacks, and the greenbacks, for anyone who does understand, debt-free money. This was printed by the United States Treasury, and it was, a, it was a type of money that we should be using now, not Federal Reserve notes. 
the the elite resented these these bills. Uh, see, the greenbacks these greenbacks could finance the U.S. government's debt, uh, secretly financed by the knights of the Golden Circle who paid Booth. Uh, this is why uh, they they wanted to get rid of him. How much? How much Ross did you say had, Booth had cash on hand? Sixty-five hundred dollars in paper money. That is a, a lot of money back in the eighteen sixty-five. So by my uh, rough calculations, that's about that's a herd of cows, about three hundred and twenty-five head. So that's a nice size yeah, herd of cattle. Yeah, exactly. He would. Yep. He uh, he was paid very well, very very well for his deed. The Rothschilds had made several attempts to establish a central bank in the U.S. so that they could control the creation of money and credit from this fledgling nation. The Rothschilds had an agent in Washington, George Washington's cabinet, Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton had been made Secretary of the Treasury and had advocated to Washington and Congress to approve a central bank. I'm not going to go all fully into this, but basically he was the beginning of trouble uh, in our early days. Uh, Hamilton's argument, quote, A national debt, if it is not excessive, will be to us a national blessing. The wisdom of the government will be never uh, shown in never trusting itself with the use of, of so seducing and dangerous the expedient of issuing its own money. So he's like saying, well, Government should never be seduced with creating its own money. So let's just give it to the bankers because you know they're not seduced by greed. Hamilton they're also the made them believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hamilton also made them believe that the only debt, uh, that only debt-based uh, money uh, issued by private banks would be accepted in dealing with countries abroad. Uh, he's completely wrong. Thomas Jefferson, Washington Secretary of State, strongly opposed Hamilton's proposal. But his advice was ignored, and Washington relented, and, and we had a, our first central bank in 1791. A 20-year charter was put into place, and it was disastrous. It didn't work, and by one vote in 1811, they did not recharter it. Here's what Andrew Jackson and Thomas Jefferson, they were the ones that really championed it. This is Andrew Jackson way back in the 1811. This is the years before he became president, before the, the War of 1812. They championed the elimination of the first bank. Here's what Jackson said. If Congress has a right under the Constitution to issue paper money, it was given to them by themselves not to be delegated to individuals or corporations. So this brought to, the, uh, to an end the first U.S. bank. It was voted out. This is what Nathan Rothschild said as a reaction. Quote, either the application for the renewal of the charter is granted or the United States will find itself involved in a most disastrous war. Can you imagine if the bankers would say something like that in public nowadays? Mm. Right, Brian? What, 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 yeah. what would happen? You know, that would really get their secret out there, wouldn't it? It's your, even more so, yeah, than it already is. Yep. Absolutely. Andrew Jackson and the rest of Washington's cabinet did not believe the power of uh, uh, did not believe the power of the international bankers could cross the ocean so easily. Quote by Jackson, if you are a den of thieves and vipers, I intend to rout you out, and by the eternal God, I will rout you out. So there was definitely a war against banking. Uh, and without going into all this, I've done this before, basically the War of 1812 was carried out against us, not to, to de defeat uh, the United States in any sort of a war. It was to bankrupt us in fighting against the British. By the time 1816 rolled around and we had won the War of 1812, we accepted a second Bank of the United States because we felt like we couldn't finance our own country. Only the bankers were smart enough. And so against Thomas Jefferson and against Andrew Jackson, they, uh, the bankers were able to get their second bank. After a 20-year charter and Andrew Jackson's fight against the banks after becoming president, this bank was destroyed. So the bankers you know, are relentless. They continued. They continued on with trying to dominate the United States. Uh, went all the way to the Civil War. So Lincoln was elected. Started printing these these uh, greenbacks, int you know, interest-free money. Uh, this is what Lincoln wrote about his the greenbacks that he, uh, he created with his government. We gave the people of this republic the greatest blessing they have ever had, their own paper money to pay their own debt. Not long after the issuance of debt free monies, the London Times published this article. This is part of it. If that mischievous financial policy, which has its origins in the North American Republic, should be uh, a fixture 
then the government will furnish its own money without cost. It will pay its debts without a debt. It will have the money necessary to carry on its commerce. It will become prosperous beyond precedent in the history of civilized governments of the world. The brains and the wealth of all countries will go to North America. The government must be destroyed or it will destroy every monarchy on the globe. What do you think, Brian, before we go into the break? Yeah, that's very interesting. And look, look, how, look how the expenses of war uh, just happen to facilitate the need for, for countries to go into debt. We will be back with one final segment. Stay tuned. Final segment on the Patriot Radio News Hour this Friday Live, the 15th of February, day after Valentine's Day. We've got $5 gold liberties, $370 a piece. Still have uh, rolls of utility, uh, more effectively known as junk, silver, dimes, and quarters. Uh, quarter rolls, 125 <clears throat> excuse me. Two dime rolls, same price, 125 same amount of silver, and two, uh, two of those silver dime rolls as one roll of quarters. That toll-free number, 800-951-0592. Take it away, Jason. Yeah, I, I, you know, I basically got the whole thing out. I got one more uh, double paragraph here I want to read that, that, that finishes it off. But if you don't believe uh, that the, the global bankers of this world are – uh, slowly tightening their grip around everything. You you really should look at into some history and, and and find out for yourself. Uh, Brian and myself and Joe, we're not going to go lead a war against bankers, but you can protect yourself by buying gold and silver. You can get yourself out of debt. Do what it takes to take care of your house. You know that America still is the freest and uh, best country in the world, but uh, an uh, an educated populace would help combat this sort of thing. So let me read this. Let me read this last paragraph. Dennis Passero, is the, this is the, one of his quotes uh, in, in a newspaper printed. In 1876, Otto van Bismarck has this to say. The division of the United States into two federations of equal force was long decided before the Civil War by the high financial powers of Europe. These bankers were afraid that the United States, if they remained in one block as a nation, would attain economical and financial independence, which would upset the international bankers' financial domination over the world. The voice of the Rothschilds predominated. They foresaw the tremendous booty if they could substitute two feeble democracies indebted to the European financiers, to the vigorous republic, confident and self-providing. Therefore, they, st- they, started their, they started their emissaries in order to exploit the question of slavery and thus dig an abyss between the two parts of the republic. While McCarty links the Golden Circle with the Jesuits, Dr. Stuart Crane says that the Golden Circle was financed by the Rothschilds. And this is, this is something that the, uh, the, the bankers of today, they know that being... Uh, Mute, nobody knowing their history, nobody knowing who they are, greatly uh, increases their power and ability to fool us with all the crazy crap that we see on TV on a daily basis, and all the you know just the the nonsense that uh, Americans are looking at instead of the truth and actual history. Go ahead, go ahead, Brian. Well, <clears throat> Jason, I'm just going to say that those like Joe and ourselves and, and many others out there that are trying have have tried to reveal the antics of the central bankers are like that little Toto dog in the Wizard of Oz trying to pull that curtain back uh, so that they can't just sit uh, back in the shadows and, and pull the strings and cause mayhem and havoc all over the all over the earth. So that's, the, you know, that's where Patriot comes in. Been doing it for, for 23 years. You listeners know that. Uh, you've been listening to Joe and uh, Eric before him, Eric and Robbie. Uh, we're here to help get you squared away so that you can be your own central banker and uh, protect yourself, isolate yourself, your your finances at least, as much as possible from this debt-based system. But uh, that's all i got to say, Jason. Excellent. It was a pleasure doing the show today. And remember, on Monday, you can always uh, go to 1360khnc.com and stream us any day, and especially Monday. Thank you. Thanks for listening, folks. Have a great rest of your day.